Hi, Ben from Ben's Army. Today we're going to talk about two big things, strength training and hypertrophy training. Hypertrophy training, which I'll just call for the rest of the day, is bodybuilding training. Trying to get as much muscle growth as possible. Trying to get on size rather than particular strength. And I'm going to talk about how to differentiate because a lot of people walk into the gym and go, oh, I want to get big and strong. It's quite hard to do one workout and achieve both outcomes with optimal results. So I'm going to show you how to do strength training and bodybuilding training in conjunction with each other, not necessarily in the same workout, but how you can alternate between days to get stronger and bigger at the, in the same time as such. All right, so sets and reps is where it really differentiates from the start. You'll see with your reps, eight, three to five versus eight to 12. The reason why is Working three to five reps, you're going to be working your peripheral nervous system, which activates your muscle fibers more, to or to really get your motor units to fire as much muscle as possible. So you're training your nervous system over here more really than your muscles. Or over this side, you're going to be working more, fatiguing at your muscle fibers, so you cause muscle small micro tears and muscles to make them have to heal and recover and get bigger and overcome with the load that they put up with. So, nervous system versus muscles. That's where it really starts to differentiate. Over here, it's really for, say, for chest. You're gonna do three sets of five, and that's it for chest. That's your whole workout, three heavy working sets. Right over here, you're gonna do minimum three sets per exercise for chest. So you might do flat bench press, and you're gonna superset with push-ups, and then your next round might be incline bench press, superset it with flat dumbbells, then your third round might be pec deck into some other chest exercise. So you might end up actually doing about 200 to 300 reps over this side in a whole workout, where over here you're gonna do literally one to six reps per set. So you might do three to 20, well, 20 odd reps, depending on how, lot, how you're basing your program at that time. So, but the most common strength program is five fives. So you do five sets of five and one exercise, so 25 reps is your full workout versus up to 300 odd. And I have done shoulder workouts in the past where up to like you aim for 400 reps in one workout. All right, so over here, you never really superset anything because you're wanting your muscles to be at 100% ready to go every single rep. Where over here, you're supersetting everything to cause more fatigue, to cause more muscle breakdown, to, to, so you really, that's where they're really different. Well, as I said, each rep over here is done at 100% effort. So you want your muscle fibers to be fully recovered between every single rep, even in the same set. So in a, a strength training set, you're going to go once one rep, so you might bench press, breathe in, bash that one out, two to three seconds, and go again. We're over here in the bodybuilding world, you're going to train to fatigue, so you're going to do full reps under control, but rep it right out until you're fully fatigued and that muscle really can't even operate anymore. So you cause those micro tears in the muscle. So that's how the sets and reps really differentiate the start. So now we work down to exercise selection. It depends on your goal. Do you just want to get overall stronger or do you want to get specifically strong in just your bench press, squat or deadlift? So for me personally, I'm doing a power to meet next month. So all I want to do is get strong in my bench press, squat and deadlift. That's it, nothing else. We're over here, exercise selection. You're gonna choose exercises for all different parts of your chest. So, because you wanna recruit as much muscle fibers in every different part that is aesthetically pleasing as such, because you wanna get bigger. So you might do incline for, for your upper pec, you might do different flies for your enclosed, you might do decline for your lower, and you'll do some flat for overall pec development. Where, for me, in strength training world, I only want bench press. That flat, one movement, I just want to make that movement as strong as possible. I don't want to do any other movements because that will make my normal bench press movement fatigued and weaker. So all I do is three sets of five, for example, on my bench press, and then after that, I might do my accessory lift will be close to bench press. So I might, I'll do two bench press movements, but they, the only difference between them is grip on the bar. That's it. Where over here, as I said, Flat, incline, decline, pet, um, flies, pet deck, whatever. You're going to be doing a huge amount of selection over here. All right. As I said, you, with motor unit, motor unit is inside the muscle and it's what the nervous system talks to to recruit your muscle fibers. So 
on strength training, you only want to recruit the, the motor units to the muscles that sit to the lift or the part you're trying to get stronger. Where you know, in the bodybuilding world, you want to recruit, every, you want to target every single motor unit in that muscle. So for release, it's a little bit different. So for squats, I only do back squats for that's all I'm interested in getting stronger in. Where in the bodybuilding world, you want to do front squats for your quads, you want to do um, Roman, Ra Romanian deadlifts for your hamstring and um, glutes, then you're going to do um, back squats for a bit more hammies, then you might do lunges for a bit more glutes. So you're going to do all different exercises to target every single muscle unit as much as possible to fatigue out your whole leg, not just one part. Next part is recovery. So the big, this is where they separate hugely as well. So as I spoke about up here, you're working your nervous system more than you are actually muscle fibers or fatiguing it in muscle fibers. Your nervous system is very slow to recover, about five times slower than your actual muscle fibers are repaired. So after a, a workout say on chest, your chest muscles are going to be recovering and repairing and getting bigger for 24 to 36 hours post-workout. Where your nervous system can get, if you really chronically fatigue your nervous system after doing really heavy lifts, up to five times longer. So, but if you're working at your five percent, like your eighty-five percent one rep max for about five reps, you're going to be able to kind of probably do that two, two or three or two week times a week. Um, so, you've really got to space out your exercise selection properly, which I'll explain down here in next next um, next part of the video. Training frequency. This is where we separate even further as well. So. For myself on a strength training regime, like a powerlifting regime, I'll do three days. Day one, I'll do, I'll write it up quickly. Training frequency for a strength training based just purely around bench press, squats and deadlifts, I'll train three days a week. So day one, I'll do heavy squats, three sets of three, um, my three sets, and my bench press, heavy three sets. Day, um, day two, well, that will be Tuesday and Thursday, I'll do heavy deadlifts with a light bench press. And I'll get that to that in a minute while I do light bench press. Day three, I'll do light squats and light deadlifts. So the reason why I do this, so squats heavy, that will fatigue my nervous system out. So then I'll go to Thursday, or, um, Saturday, when I do more light squats, so my nervous system should have recovered enough so I can re-stimulate the muscles to a level where I'm not fatiguing the nervous system out, but I'm stimulating the muscles enough so that I don't go so they don't go catabolic as such, so they don't lose their strength, or they, they're still recovering in some state, some state. So everything will get hit twice in one week. Now bodybuilding style, it really depends on how many days a week you want to come. So I did a video last week on how full body three days a week is, in my opinion, optimal for muscle growth. But some people don't enjoy that style of training. They like to just hit one muscle part per day. So they could come Monday chest, Tuesday back, Wednesday legs, Thursday shoulders, Friday arms. That's just a typical, that's a fairly typical five day split. And then they repaint. But as you see, they're only hitting, like this um, chest will be sore for Tuesday, Wednesday, and then it could be get good again and go for Thursday. So that's why I reckon the four body workouts will work better because you can train everything more often and get more stimulus. But um, it's really, as soon as your muscle fibers are recovered, you're good to go again. So if you train chest Monday and you like to hit it again on Thursday, you can go again. So you're just trying to train that muscle as often as repetitive as you can to get as much muscle growth as possible. Um, so I hope that answers a lot of your questions on how they separate from each other. So now how, this is how you can do both of these um, programs in conjunction with each other. Alright, so I've just gone through and drawn up a couple of brief options on how you can work both these systems into one to get bigger and stronger at the end point of your programming or your timeline. So, option one. So, essentially the top, um, you've got Monday to Friday and then SS is weekend. I normally get people to have a rest on the weekend or they use that as a catch up day. So, you've got row one, you might do your 5x5 five five program one week. So you've got the chest, legs, back, shoulders, arms, 5x5 five five program on each one. So your chest program, you might do um, flat bench press 5x5, five five, and then you might do incline 5x5, five five, and then you um, that will do, because that's still 50 reps of heavy sets. 
And in leagues you might do um, front squats and back, um, back squats 5x5. Five five. Back you might do your yeah, close grip chin ups and a T bar or a bent over row action 5x5. Five five. Shoulders you might do a military press and upright row 5x5. Five five. Or and then arms you might do a close grip bench press and a skull crusher action 5x5. Five five. So you're still leaning more towards that volume kind of bodybuilding style but you're still getting your strength work done. And then the next week you come through, you just go health and, health and leather doing your high volume, so your, your two to 300 set workouts. So that way it's a little bit more towards, you're still gonna get bigger and you're gonna get stronger in that program. I'd be pretty happy if any of my clients did that to get bigger and stronger at the same time. So you work both programs undulating between each other. And then for your um, full body option, if you don't mind coming in and doing your full body, some people like to come in and just get exhausted from doing a full body workout because it uses a lot of energy, a lot of calories. They feel like they get more value for their money. So if you like doing full body, so I've done Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So this is a two week cycle. So if you do your full body workout, which I've explained in the previous video, where you might do four exercises in a row, so you might go chest, back, shoulders, legs, um, do that three times three, you might, you'll do your high volume day where you do your sets of eight to 12, and then you'll come to Wednesday where you do your low volume stuff, so you might do your, your sets of three to five. And then you come back to your eight to 12, so three to five, eight to 12, three to five. So you alternate between your high, your high rep days and your low rep days. That way, this way I believe will be the better outcome in the end for size and strength. But there's two little different options for you to get stronger and bigger at the same time. Not necessarily in the same workout, but in the end, you'll be happy. So I hope this all makes sense to you. Have a good day. See you next time.